This is going to be a quick video where I show you how to rig and pose game characters in Blender. If you followed along with the series, you should already have a game model in your scene with materials set up, and now it's time to deal with the rig. This type of rig will look very confusing if you've never seen it before, because I'm sure most of you are used to seeing rigs that look like this. The big difference here is that the bones have incorrect rotation and scale, which happens when importing from a game engine, although the rig still works perfectly. Just to show you, enable in front in the armature's viewport display so you can view the bones inside the mesh. Then go into pose mode. Despite the mess, you can still select any of these bones and move, rotate or scale them, and they'll deform the mesh correctly because the weights are already set up. If you just want basic posing, you can leave the rig as is. It definitely works, but we can clean it up slightly to make it a bit easier to use. The main issue with imported rigs is the bone orientation, but we can fix this in edit mode without breaking the existing weights. Let's start by organizing the bones into collections. Select some of the bones and see what names they have. You can see this in the top left corner. Normally the bones will have names that include hair, jacket, deform, twist, and we can select these bones and put them into collections. Let's start with the hair bones. In the outliner in the top right, you can search for things in your scene. So if we type hair, we will find everything in the scene with the name hair, but in this case, it's only bones. Now we can drag select the highlighted bones in the outliner. Then with the cursor over the viewport, press M and we can move these bones into a new collection called hair. You can see your bone collections under the armature tab, and from here you can toggle them on and off with the eye icon, so now we can hide the hair bones. Let's repeat the same process for the jacket bones. In the outliner, search for jacket, select all of the highlighted bones by drag selecting them, then move them into a new collection called jacket. The jacket also has some other bones like string, collar, and hood, so we can add all of these to the jacket collection. If we look at the elbow, you'll see three bones. In edit mode, we can select all of these bones and scale them down. This just makes them easier to work with. Just change the pivot point to individual origins, and this will scale them without moving them. The middle bone is actually the main forearm bone, but the other two are helper bones called deform bones in this case. When we rotate the elbow, these deform bones can be used to really define the sharpness of the elbow. These bones do get in the way a little bit, so we can select them and add them to a new collection called deform bones. So just repeat this same process for the whole model. All you need to do is just group similar bones together so that it's easier to work with. When you're finished, you should have a bunch of different collections that look something like this. To start cleaning up the rig, I'm just going to straighten out the spine bones. So I'm going to select them and press Shift H to hide everything else. Now all we have to do is line up the end of one bone with the start of the next. We can make this a little bit easier by turning on snapping and snapping to the nearest vertex. This will snap the tail of the bone to the head of the next one. You can press shift tab to toggle snapping because for some bones you won't want the snapping to be turned on. Now we can select the leg bones and line these up as well. Make sure that the x-axis mirror is enabled and this will do both legs at once. With snapping turned on, just move the tail of one bone to match with the head of the next and they'll snap together. Now again, just repeat this same lining up process for the rest of the bones. Make sure to just scale down the bones if you need to. The face bones are quite big, so scaling them down can make it a lot easier to see. For some of them, you can just use your own judgement and figure out if the bone works better in a certain direction, but it's all down to personal preference. When you're finished, you should have a rig that looks something like this, and it should be a lot easier to work with. If you want a more advanced rig, you can use Rigify, which comes with Blender. Rigify can be incredibly complicated, so this is just a quick overview. First of all, enable Rigify in the add-ons, then add a human meta rig to your scene and line it up with the model. This does take a while, but unfortunately, rigging is just time-consuming. Then we can generate the Rigify rig, which gives us all of the fancy controls. Then we can just parent the mesh to the Rigify rig using automatic weights. This method will give you more control over the rig, but you'll have to redo all of the weight painting and remake all of the different areas like the hair and jacket. It's powerful, but it's better suited to advanced users who need more precise control. For most people, just cleaning up the imported rig works fine. And that's it for this short video game series. You should now know how to download and import game models, set up materials, and pose characters in Blender. I use game models like this to test materials and lighting setups, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the series, they're an amazing learning tool for studying how professional assets are made. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.